Yesterday when I wasn't here, we watched a podcast on relative motion. The motion of something relative to something else. Now, you've seen that before. Right? You've, you've seen and used relative motion before. And when I'm driving a car down the highway at 100 kilometers per hour, and I throw a ball, just toss a, a ball up into the air in, in your lap, well, not when you're driving the car. You shouldn't do that when you're driving the car. But when you're the passenger and you throw the ball up into the air a little bit or throw your pen up into the air a little bit, whatever, the velocity of the pen relative to the car would be zero, right? But the velocity of the pen relative to the ground would be 100 kilometers per hour. If you throw the ball towards the back of the car at 5 kilometers per hour, well, the velocity of the ball relative to the car would be 5 kilometers per hour. Relative to the ground, it would be 95 kilometers per hour. If you throw it forwards, the velocity relative to the car would be 5. Relative to the ground would be 105 kilometers per hour. We've done relative motion before. We understand, I think, the basic concept behind relative motion. Hey, you're on the escalator. You guys have all done this, right? You're on the escalator, and you walk up the up escalator. So if the escalator was going up at 3 meters per second, and you walk up at 3 meters per second, on the escalator, you're moving at 3 meters per second, but relative to the ground, you're moving at 6, right? You feel like you're going faster, right, relative to the ground. Similarly, if you walk down the up escalator at 3 meters per second, you're not going to be moving relative to the ground, right? But relative to the escalator, you still will be moving at 3 meters per second. Again, we've all done that before. We've all experienced relative motion before, and we've all, at some level, understood relative motion before. But yesterday, we started taking a look at it in two dimensions. Okay, the velocity of something relative to something else where we've got a two-dimensional uh, vector situation as opposed to a one-dimensional situation, like all the ones I just described. Now, the best way to solve those problems is to draw a vector diagram. The vector diagram is going to always have, uh, this is my way of doing it, okay? So don't, you know, don't look for this in a book or whatever. This is my way of doing it. That vector diagram should always have two solid lines and one dotted line. Now, the solid lines are going to be lines, vectors, that contribute to my overall velocity, my velocity relative to the ground. My dotted line will be the overall velocity, the relative velocity to the ground. So in other words, solid line vectors, what contributes to my velocity, my, my velocity relative to the ground? Well, where I aim does. Okay? If I'm driving my car, um, driving my car down the highway, but there's a wind that's blowing, a really, really strong wind that's blowing to the east. And I kind of have my steering wheel turned a little bit, aiming to the west. Where I'm aiming would be a solid line vector, because that contributes to where I actually go, right? Think about that. If where you aim doesn't contribute to where you go, then why don't you just take your hands off the wheel and just go wherever? Okay, of course where you aim is going to contribute to where you go. Similarly, the wind will contribute to where you go. Why do I have to aim kind of off to the west a little bit when I'm, when I'm in a really, really strong wind so that I can go straight? Because the wind is blowing. The wind is contributing to where I'm going as well. The wind is kind of bringing me back. That's a solid line vector because it contributes to where I actually go. If I'm in, a, if, if I'm in water and there's a current, try to swim directly across the river. Okay. Try to swim directly across the river. Where you aim will contribute to where you end up on the other side. But so will the river current contribute to where you end up on the other side. Those are all solid line vectors because they contribute to where you actually go. Now, my dotted line vector, that's my resultant. Okay, that's my resultant vector. In other words, it's the sum of my solid line vectors. When I combine the things that contribute to where I actually go, then I end up where I actually go. In other words, when I combine my solid line vectors, like wind speed and where I'm aiming, or the river current and where I'm heading in the ship, when I combine those, I get my resultant vector, my dotted line vector, which is where I actually go, the velocity typically relative to the ground, or sometimes we call it the ground velocity. So we did a couple examples yesterday. First one, we're not going to go through this entirely mathematically, guys. I just want to set it up again real quickly for you. The first one says the pilot of a plane heads north to Edmonton at 200 kilometers per hour. That's a solid line vector. 
because I'm heading, I'm aiming in a certain direction. Where I head in my airplane contributes to where I end up. Now, I don't end up north, right? I end up somewhere else. But this contributes to where I go. There's a wind at 50 kilometers per hour blowing to the east. That's going to be a solid line back because the wind contributes to where I go. When I combine those, my vector diagram is going to look something like this. Right? Drawn head to tail, front to back. It's like the old rules of vector addition that we learned last week. My resultant vector, and from start to finish, that's where I actually go. That's my velocity relative to the ground. If I aim towards Edmonton, but there's a wind blowing towards Saskatchewan, then I'm going to end up in like Lloyd Minster or something. Okay? My actual uh, velocity or my velocity relative to the ground. Here's another one. I don't think we did this one with you yesterday. The captain of a ship aims her ship east at 20 kilometers per hour. Solid or dotted line? Aims her ship. Good. That contributes to where we go, right? If, listen, if where you aim, said this before, if where you aim doesn't contribute to where you go, then why would you aim there? What's the point of aiming somewhere if that's not contributing to where you're going to actually end up going? We're aiming to the east at 20 kilometers per hour. So let's draw that as a solid line vector. There's a current of 10 kilometers per hour that takes the ship off course. Uh, there should be a direction there. Let's make it uh, south. Solid or dotted line vector. Does the river current or the, the ocean current, whatever it is, does that contribute to where we actually go or is that where we actually go? Jacob? Right, it, it contributes to it, right? It helps us go to where we end up going. It's a solid line vector. It's to the south. Now, two solid line vectors we add together by drawing front to back, so it's going to look like this. The resultant vector, which is drawn from start to finish, we're going to make it dotted now. That's where the ship actually ends up going. And that should make some sense to us, right? If we aim to the east, if we aim to the east, but there's a river current that takes us downwards, then we're going to end up going down into the east somewhere, right? Where does it end up going? Well, let's find r and theta this time, since we didn't do this example yesterday in your notes. Okay, mathematically, it's easy. 20 squared plus 10 squared is 500. The square root of that is, I don't know, around 24. Anybody want to check that, please? 22.4. We're going to round that to 22 degrees. Sorry, 22 meters, kilometers per hour. Two digits, because this is two digits, and this is two digits. Theta is the inverse tan function of opposite over adjacent, 10 over 20. Let's say, give me like 30 degrees. 27 degrees. What would it be? 27 degrees what of what? Yep. south of east, right? Because we went east then south, south after east, or south of east. You can imagine how important this might be if you were the captain of a ship. There's a current in this ocean, or this lake, or this St. Lawrence River that you're trying to cross. There's a current. But you want to end up over there. Okay, you're in London, England, and you want to end up in New York City. Well, you better know how to deal with the river current. You better know where you have to aim to end up in New York. You don't want to aim towards New York because, oh, I'll just go straight there. But there's some kind of current that takes you off course, and you end up in Florida. You can imagine how it would be useful to be able to do some kind of vector analysis as the captain of a ship. or as the, as the captain of an airplane, right? the pilot of a plane. There's a wind blowing in a certain direction. Well, you have to take that into account. Because if you aim towards Edmonton, you want to go towards Edmonton, you're aiming towards Edmonton, but there's a wind, a really strong wind that's blowing to the east, you're not going to end up in Edmonton. You're going to end up in Saskatoon. And who wants to go to Saskatoon? 
Well, who wants to go to Edmonton, really, right? So it might be useful to be able to do a vector analysis like this in, if you're in one of those one of those positions. I think we did this example yesterday in the notes. Okay, we'll just draw the vector diagram for this one since we did it yesterday. The airspeed of an airplane is 800 kilometers per hour. The pilot aims the plane west, but there's a wind that's to the south. So we aim to the west. The speed of the plane without a wind is 800 kilometers per hour. You take a look at the, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I fly, um, um, whenever I fly, and, and they're doing that safety spiel at the beginning, um, I have been through that so many times. Like, you know what, put your own oxygen mask on first before you help anybody else, and follow the little lights to the emergency exit, and so on and so on. I've been through that so many times that I don't really pay attention to it. I should but I don't pay any attention to it. Um, you know what I do? I take the, the magazine that's in the, in the seat pocket in front of me and I just start flipping through it. And for whatever reason, I always end up at the back of the magazine that has the list of airplanes that the airline flies. And, it, and one of the things that it gives you is the airspeed of those airplanes. This particular airplane will have an airspeed of 800 kilometers per hour or 900 kilometers per hour. That's the speed if there's no wind. If there's no wind, that's how fast that airplane can go. Um, that's how fast the airplane can aim, can try to go 800 kilometers per hour. So we're aiming to the west. Well, the velocity at which I aim is the airspeed of the airplane, 800 kilometers per hour. There's a 75 kilometer per hour wind to the south. That's a solid line vector as well because that contributes to where I go. It's not where I go. This isn't where I go either. They both contribute to where I go. Where I go is down here. If I aim to the west, but there's a wind to the south, then I end up going south and west. So I could find r by the Pythagorean theorem. I could find theta by the inverse damp function. Good? You guys said question five and six on your worksheet for, for homework last night. Uh, the answer to number six is... 16 meters per second at an angle of 18 degrees west of south. Um, you could have also expressed that as 72 degrees south of west, right? Did anybody do that? 72 south of west? Um, no. No, it's not east because... We'll take a look at that question in a second here for you, okay? Because um, in the end, right, there's a river current to the east. Where do you have to aim to compensate for a river current to the east? To the west, right? Okay. Okay, so we'll take a look at that one just to make sure you're clear on... No, you don't arbitrarily change it. Um, logically, we can think, oh, yeah, it should be to the west because the current is to the east, but it should kind of just fall into place for you. You shouldn't have to worry too much about remembering that. It should fall into place. And I'll show you how, how it does fall into place in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it should technically be 18, because if you look at your digits in that question, 15 is two digits, 5.0 is two digits, so the final answer should be two digits as well. Although I wouldn't mark that wrong yet, right? not until after your first unit test. And seven... 7 was 1.3 times 10 to the 2 meters per second. Some people might say, well, why isn't it, why isn't it just 130 meters per second? Because it should be two digits, right? 130 meters per second is three digits. 20 meters per second is two digits. The final answer should be two digits. So 1.3 times 10 to the 2. And the angle here, this question's a little bit tougher, actually. 8.7 degrees east of south. Uh, let's do number six. You know what? Let's do both of them. Let's do six and seven. Six says, the captain of a ship wants to go directly south. Wants to go directly south. Well, let's assume the captain of the ship can actually go south. He wants to go south. Across the river at 15 meters per second. But there's a river current. Where do we have to aim? If he or she wants to go south, that's 
a dotted line vector. Okay? Where you want to go doesn't contribute to where you go. Where you aim contributes to where you go. Where you want to go is where you go. So we're going to make that a dotted line vector. We have a dotted line vector to the south for question number six. And its value is 15 meters per second. A resultant vector. When I look into, when I look at the river current and where I aim, they both contribute to that vector that you see right there. All right. Next one. There's a current of 5 to the east. That's a solid line vector, 5 to the east, because that contributes to where I go. Now, where am I going to draw that, though? The tough part of this question is where I draw that solid line vector. How about, I'm going to give you four options. Okay, I'm going to give you four options. Option one, option two, option three, or option four. Where can I draw, where is, uh, sorry, it's to the east, isn't it? So it should be the other direction. Option one, option two, option three, option four. Yeah, I've got it drawn to the west here, don't I? Five meters per second to the east. So one, two, three, or four. Lewis, which one am I going to use here? Three? Okay. There's a couple of options here. By the way, you're right with number three. Okay, if I draw it number three, what's the other option, though? Number two. Why does, let's take away three and two for a second, the right ones, and leave only the ones that are wrong there. Why does this one not work? Why does option one not work there? Lewis? Good. Good. The dotted line is a resultant vector, and then it has to be drawn from start to finish. Okay, and if you draw it like this, that can't be drawn from the start. Okay, that's not the start. It can't be. Similarly, if you draw this down here, well, that's not the finish. So you can't use option one or three there. It just doesn't work because you don't follow the rules of vector addition. Now, if you draw in position two or four, okay, that would work. Okay? Start, yeah, okay, that works. Or drawn towards the finish, that works. I'm going to suggest that you draw the vector down there in, in position three. Okay. Draw it down here because end to end, finish to finish, um, works best for us. It's easier to find the angle when you draw it in that position. Although, you could still do it up here. Okay, you could still do it up here. That would be correct. It's just easier if you draw it down there. So we aim at 5 meters per second to the east. Oh, sorry, there's a, there's a current of 5 meters per second to the east. Where do I have to aim? Right here. Is that, so, that dotted line vector drawn from start to finish? It is. Are the, the solid line vectors drawn from front to back? They are. This looks like a good vector diagram. This is where I have to aim. This is not the resultant vector, though. It's a component vector, right? <coughs> Excuse me. This should make sense. If we want to go south, but there's a wind to the east, where do we have to aim? To the west, right? To the south and to the west. So how are we going to find this, right? What are we going to call this? Uh, let's call it VA, the speed at which we're aiming, okay? And we'll make this theta right here. This is the angle at which I have to aim. How do I find VA? Well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We already have c. So this time, instead of saying v is the square root of this plus this, it's going to be the square root of v. Uh, no, wait, that is the hypotenuse, isn't it? Yeah, it's still the hypotenuse. Yeah, it's just not the resultant vector. But mathematically, it works out to be the same. Still the square root of 15 squared plus 5 squared. 225 plus 25, square root of 250. What was it, 16, I think? Yeah, 16 meters per second. The angle is the inverse tan function of opposite over adjacent, 5 over 15, which gives me 18 degrees 
And this would be west of south because it's measured from the south, right? West from the south. Right? So does that make sense, the whole west thing there? Okay. So you see how in a question like this where, you know, we predicted that it should be west and south, but how it just kind of works out mathematically, even if you don't make that prediction. Okay, the other one was number seven, which is the pilot of an airplane wants to go directly south at 130. Wants to go, wants to go south. Like, let's assume that this pilot is, is somewhat competent and ends up where he or she wants to go. Is that going to be a solid or dotted line vector? Yeah, dot. There's a wind blowing to the west at 20 meters per second. That's solid, right? Because that contributes to where the pilot actually goes. So let's draw that 20 meters per second to the west. Where do we have to aim? OK, is it position 1, position 2, position 3, or position 4? I'll tell you what. Let's get rid of these first two, although one of them is actually correct. I like drawing them at the bottom. Yep. Position four? Yes. Because that's the only one between three and four that you can draw from the, uh, the uh, dotted line vector from start to finish, right? Drawn head to head. There's where I got to aim. We'll call that VA, where I have to aim. V is the square root of 130 squared plus 20 squared. Do the math there. Works out to be 130 something, which to two digits is still 1.3 times 10 to the 2. And the angle is the inverse tan function of opposite over adjacent. We get 8.7 degrees. Hey, let me show you. This is east of south, by the way. Sometimes people make the opposite and adjacent backwards, and they get the angle wrong. Okay. Forget about the number for the angle there for a second. Look at this picture, and I want you to tell me in this picture, again, we didn't just calculate that angle. Pretend we didn't. Tell me whether that angle should be above 45 or below 45. I'm going down 130. I'm going over 20. Should the angle be above 45 or below 45? Below. So if you happen to mix up opposite and adjacent, you're going to get an angle of 91.3 degrees there. Well, you're wrong, because you know it has to be below 45 degrees there, right? That makes sense? A nice little check for us, right? Especially if you're one of those people that tends to mix those up, you know, which we all do at some point. Here's what I'd like you to do uh, after... You take a quick two-minute break to go to the bathroom and do what you need to do. I'd like you to finish up that worksheet, question number five on the worksheet, and questions eight and nine on that worksheet, all right? Give you a little bit of time in class to do it after your break, and then we'll take a look at especially number five as a class in a little bit here. All right, if everyone can have a look up here, we'll take a look at number five. Five A, I think you find that it's, if you understand what we've been doing, 5A isn't going to be a huge issue for you. B and C, on the other hand, maybe they will, even if you understand what we've been doing. They're challenging questions, okay, at least once you see them uh, for the first time here. 5 says the captain of a ship aims his ship with a velocity of 25 meters per second directly north across the river. So he's aiming, he's aiming to the north across the river. That's a solid line vector, 25 meters per second to the north, solid line vector. But there's a river current to the east of 8 meters per second. So let's draw the river current as a solid line vector as well to the east. Those both contribute to where their boat actually goes. Where does the boat go? I don't know right now exactly, but I know that, that where I aim and the river current both contribute to where I actually go. So where am I going to go? I'm going to end up going right here, north and east. And that should make sense, right? If I aim to the north, but there's a current to the east, I'm going to end up going northeast somewhere. This is what I want to find. Now, I've got a little bit more to draw here. 
Here's the river. The width of this river is 850 meters. That's going to play no part whatsoever in question A. But I'm going to draw it because I have the information. And it's going to help me with question B and C. Where do we end up going? Question A, let's say V is equal to the square root of 25 squared plus 8 squared. Or you could say R is equal to the square root of 25 squared plus 8 squared. For R for resultant vector, right? Doesn't matter what you call it, really. We solve that. We said it to be 26.24881 meters per second. But we're going to round it two digits. You look at your original data. 25 is two digits. 8.0 is two digits. 850 is three digits. Final answer should have two digits. Go back to the least precise piece of data. 26 meters per second. The angle is found by the inverse tan function of opposite over adjacent, 8 over 25. And that works out to be 17.74, uh, or 18 degrees, east of north. OK, how many people got that answer for question A? 18 degrees east of north, or could be 72 degrees north of east. Yes? All right, B, the time that it takes the ship to cross the river. Let's take a little poll here. How many people got, um, who got an answer for this, for question B? Okay. Derek, what'd you get for your answer? 34 seconds. Anybody else get a different answer? 33 seconds. 33? 33? Uh-oh, Derek, it's not sounding good for you. 33? 32, okay. 32? So basically, Derek, of all the people that got it, most people say 30, 33. A couple of people say 32. You're the only person who said 34. Oh, you're with them? Oh, okay, okay. Somebody's on your side. I'm on your side too, Derek. You're right. It's 34 seconds. Good job. Why is it 34 seconds? Well, uh, most people, as I was walking around, started off the right way. Okay, that's good. Okay, it's good. It means you're thinking. They started off using V is equal to delta D over delta T. <coughs> Want to rearrange this to solve for T? Right, take the T up by multiplying, the V down by dividing, T becomes equal to D over V. But here's what people, uh, here's what people did. People said the distance across the river is 850 meters, right? I bet all of you did that. The velocity, people said, is 26 meters per second. But that's wrong. Derek, what velocity do I use there? Good. Why am I going to use 25 meters per second there as opposed to 26 meters per second? I just calculated the velocity to be 26 meters per second. Why am I using 25, Derek? Right. Look, if you're using the displacement straight across, then you better use the velocity straight across. If you're going to use this velocity right here, this dotted line velocity at the angle, that's okay. But if you do that, you better make sure you use what displacement? The displacement at that same angle, which we don't know what that is. You could figure it out, but it would be kind of a roundabout way of doing the question. Okay, remember this. When you're dealing with two vectors in the same equation, you've got to be consistent. Okay, if one of them is straight across, the other one has to be straight across. If one of them is diagonal, the other has to be diagonal. If one of them is downstream, the other has to be downstream. Don't say, let's use the distance, straight, the displacement straight across, but the velocity at an angle. That doesn't work. Does that make sense? Okay, we do the math on this one now. We end up getting 34 seconds. Now, question C. C asks us for how, stream the ship, how far downstream the ship ends when it reaches the other side. Well, here we're going to use V equals D over T as well, but this time we're going to rearrange the solve for V. Oh, sorry, for D. T goes up by multiplying. We want to find out how far downstream the boat ends. What velocity do we need to use? Uh, 
Uh, not 26, no. Eight. If we're using the displacement downstream, we need to use the velocity downstream. Right? Okay, remember, guys, if you're going to use the 26 meters per second, this velocity right here, that can be okay. But if you're going to use that, you better make sure you have a displacement at the same angle. We don't know what that is. If we want to find out this displacement, then we've got to use that velocity. So it's going to be 8 meters per second. What's my time? How come, the right part, by the way, thank you. How come I have to use the velocity that's in the same direction as the displacement, but my time can be across the river or downstream or whatever? How come I don't have to worry about that with time? Tony? Uh, time didn't change, but why doesn't it change? No, not because of manipulative variable. Good. It's definitely good, because it's a scalar. Okay. Time for the x, time for the y, it doesn't matter, because time's a scalar, right? But velocity and displacement are vectors. So we've got to be consistent with velocity and, and displacement, right? East, got to go with east. South, got to go with south, right? Yeah? It would be, yeah. You'd end up going 26 meters per second, right? Which is one meter per second faster than than uh, where you were aiming at 25 meters per second, right? Now, but you're still not gonna, but you're not going downstream at 26 meters per second. You're going kind of down and over at 26 meters per second, right? The speed at which you're going downstream is still only eight. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you why you were off there. 1017, did you say? Or 18? 1017 or 18? Oh, I thought you said, I thought you said, sorry, you said 17 there. Um, no, I, uh, I, I thought somebody might try that, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's more of a mathematical analysis as opposed to a physics analysis, but I never marked that wrong. Okay. What Brian did, guys, was... Okay, let's get rid of some of this stuff. We've got too much stuff going on here. Brian uh, kind of redrew it. But he redrew it. I don't know whether you physically redo it, but at some level you redo it in your mind at least. Um, you redo it as displacement vectors. Now instead of 25 meters per second, this is 850 meters. But the angle is still the same. So Brian said 10, 18 is equal to opposite over adjacent. And if we're using displacement vectors in a diagram, then the opposite one should be, should work out to be, uh, what was it? Um, 2.7 times 10 to the 2 meters, which is our displacement the other way as well. Now, Brian, why did you get an answer that was slightly off? To 18 degrees, yeah. It's, it probably should be 17.74474, right? Don't round until a final answer. So the um, 18 degrees is a final answer for question A. But when you use that angle later on, it's all of a sudden no longer a final answer. We want to go back to the unrounded number for that. Okay, Your method is perfect. You just haven't had an issue with the rounding there. It's a small thing. Probably a half a point that would be on a test. Next time you're not going to do that. Not make that mistake, right? Everybody else kind of think of it the same way? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't care which way you do it, guys. Okay, Whichever way makes more sense to you is, is the way that you should do it. You had 850 divided by 25. Well, that will give you the time, right? Yeah. 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 And that's exactly what we did for the time, right? 850 divided by 25. Not randomly, 
but because it's displacement divided by velocity, gives me the time. And then what'd you do after that? Divided by eight. Okay. Yeah. So you did it the same way as us. Whether you wrote down the equations or not, you did it exactly the same way as we did. Okay. You guys, are good with those? Okay, who's still working on questions uh, 8 and 9 here? Who's finished questions 8 and 9? Okay, here's what I'm going to do, guys. Um, I'm going to give you some answers to questions 8 and 9 that you can check your answers, and then we'll take a look at maybe one of them in a couple minutes. Um, for those of you who aren't finished, you can at least, when you do finish, check your answers. Number 8 is 36 meters per second. We weren't asked to find the angle, so we'll just leave it there. And number nine, 97 meters per second. Again, we weren't asked to find the angle in question nine either. Check that if you got an answer. If you haven't got an answer, uh, get an answer and then check it. Give you about two more minutes and then we'll take a look at one of these two questions. All right, everyone, having a look at question number eight on your worksheet here. It says the captain of a ship wants to go north. Okay, solid or dotted line if he wants to go north. Or she wants to go north. Solid or dotted line? Dotted line. Wants to go north, dotted line. Um, 35 meters per second. There's a current to the, talks about a current, then a wind speed. Like, um, just kind of mixed up the question a little bit, but current and the wind speed would be equivalent to each other, right? So let's say the current is to the east. Um, Currents to the east, so let's draw right here. We don't know how strong the current is. The speed of the boat without the current would be 50 meters per second. This is going to be the 50. Speed of the boat without current. The speed of the boat without the current and the speed of the current result in the speed that I actually go, 35 meters per second. So let's find the speed of the current up here. Now, be careful with this. If this is A, and this is B, and this is C, we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Therefore, C would be the square root of A squared plus B squared. But I'm not solving for C here. I have C. I'm solving for A. So what am I going to do with that mathematically, Lewis? Right. So a squared equals c squared minus b squared, right? Take it over by subtracting. a is the square root of c squared minus b squared. Or in other words, b is the square root of 35 squared, sorry, 50 squared minus 35 squared. And when I do that math, it works out to be 36 meters per second. Now, we were asked for the speed of the wind. We weren't asked for any direction, so the angle that I have labeled there is irrelevant, right? We don't need to calculate that angle. If we did, it would be the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. Good. How many people got that? Good. Good. You guys are coming along. Um, finish up question number nine for homework. We will have a quiz tomorrow, but remember the quiz tomorrow will be on just basic vector addition. Here's three or four vectors. Might have a funny angle. Okay, add them up. We won't be worrying about this whole solid line, dotted line, vector stuff. That'll come later in the week that we'll have that quiz. Okay, so your homework tonight, only question number nine on that worksheet, and review for your quiz tomorrow. Right, that's it for today.